Hello again, everyone. I'm Dan Colbert, continuing my series on songwriting. Um, this is episode number four, uh, which is uh, our last on harmony, the foundation of your song. Uh, and apart from a few comments uh, that I'll be making uh, here and there as we go along on harmony, but uh, this will kind of uh, conclude the basic uh, discussion on harmony. Uh, to this point, we've discussed the, uh, the home quadrant um, of uh, three major and three minor chords, uh, as you see in the uh, circle of fifths um, uh, to my right. Um, this, as we've talked about, kind of comprised these six chords, whatever key you're in, um, uh, centered around that key, comprise the meat and potatoes of your song, okay? And you can have a lot of success just staying kind of in that home quadrant. Um, but uh, we talked about adding other ingredients from outside that quadrant, other chords uh, from outside. That's like adding other ingredients to your stew. And last week we talked about adding uh, what I think of as kind of the most basic spices, the salt and pepper of your spice rack. Uh, to these chords, uh, to modify these chords, whether they're inside the home quadrant or outside them. And these are the flat sevenths and major sevenths, um, which are often used as a place to resolve your, your uh, chord progression from. Okay, so uh, for instance, the flat seventh turnaround at the end of a blues progression that we talked about last week. Uh, today, I'll be talking about making use of um, uh, those other slightly more exotic spices on your music spice rack uh, that we call the seconds, fourths, and sixths. So let's, uh, we'll get into that in just a moment, but let me just say a couple words before we, we get to that. If you're getting a little tired of this more theoretical material, and it has been, I want to encourage you. Uh, to stick with me. Today, again, is the last of our kind of heavy music theory, um, which I felt was necessary to kind of lay down the fundamentals of, uh, of your song. Uh, next time, um, I'll start talking more about kind of down-to-earth practical ideas from my songwriting experience, which I hope uh, will benefit you. And I think we're going to uh, start talking about rhythm and lyrics next time. So please hang in there. Appreciate your pace, patience. Uh, it's about to get a little less academic and more fun, I promise. So on to seconds, fourths, and sixths. So <clears throat> what do I mean by a second, a fourth, and a sixth? And it, it's really very simple. For any triad chord, let's say the A major chord, because I'll be doing a lot of examples in A major today. Uh, we add to the chord either the second, fourth, or sixth note of the corresponding scale. So, for instance, um, if we wanted to construct an A4 chord out of the original A major chord, which uh, you'll recall consists of the notes A, C sharp, and E, we would add to that triad, that major triad, the fourth note of the A major scale, which is D, okay? So an A4 chord would consist of A, C sharp, D, and E, okay? An A2 chord, likewise, would have A, B, C sharp, and E. We add the B in, the, t the second note of the A major scale, A6, Similarly, the, the sixth, sixth note of the A major scale is F sharp, so we would have a chord, the A6 chord would consist of A, C sharp, E, and F sharp, okay? We can also do the same for the minor versions of uh, the triad. So, for instance, an A minor with a 4 would be A, C, D, and E. In other words, the same as the A4 we talked about at first, but replacing that C sharp with a C, which makes it a, an A minor chord, okay? 
So it's pretty easy to kind of write these down if you if you ever want to do that. Um, but I just wanted to kind of uh, set that down for you for clarification to begin with. Um, and again, as you fool around on your instrument with these things, they'll become second nature and you won't even think about kind of, you know, what, it, what goes into them, okay? Adding the second and fourth to chords is often called a suspension, okay? It's kind of a technical word in music, a suspension, because they're often used to temporarily cause a sense of tension through dissonance okay, that then resolves to a more consonant sound, either, either the basic triad of that chord or another chord that has a kind of resolved uh, sound to it. Uh, you can understand uh, that even before I um, uh, play it for you by, um, by seeing that in each of these uh, examples, A2, A4, and A6, there are three notes um, that are bunched tightly together, okay, within an interval as small as a minor third, uh, in the case of the uh, sus4, okay. So, for instance, let me listen to the resolution from a sus4 to a sus4 to an A. A sus4, A, okay? So in the sus4, I'm just adding a D. You can even just hear with those two notes how it sounds resolved, okay? Now, uh, I have to make another word about nomenclature, unfortunately, because uh, in music uh, uh, theory, things are sometimes harder than they really need to be. Uh, as I said, the two and the four varieties are called sus suspensions, so they're usually written in song charts, but not always, as sus4 or sus2. You'll have like A, capital A, and then in uh, subscript next to it, sus4, sus4, or sus2. Uh, sometimes you'll see a add two or add four. Again, there's, uh, it's just not totally consistent. Um, now the sixth is not considered to be a suspension because it doesn't quite act in the same way to resolve back to the plain triad, okay? Um, for instance, I'll, I'll just play a, a D6 chord back to a D, and you can hear that. Okay, it doesn't really, now it does resolve to the A, okay? It adds some tension and resolves back to the A. Remember, the D is the four chord of A. So remember we talked about that plagal cadence that's like the most, you know, it's that church-like, uh, very, very basic um, uh, cadence. And so we have, you know, we could do... That's the plagal cadence in A, from D to A. And if we go, if we use the D6, it still has that resolving thing going on, but it's a little bit spicier. I hope you can hear that, okay? Uh, at any rate, the, the, we don't talk about sus six. I've never seen that anyway. Maybe some people do. Um, because I think of this, it, it doesn't resolve in the same way. Uh, it's a kind of a quirk of the nomenclature. I don't want to make a big deal about it, but I'm I'm telling you what guitarists especially and and pianists too, as far as I'm aware, call these things and don't call them. They'll typically refer to just uh, they'll say a six, okay, instead of a sus six or a add six. Sometimes you'll see a add six. For the minor variations, you'll see them typically written as a minor add four and so on, or add two. Why? I think it's because, um, so as not to add any confusion that the M 
for minor might be modifying the for. In other words, I guess if you didn't know better, you could think, okay, we're playing an A with a flat four, which would sound very, very dissonant. I'm not sure I've ever seen that in a song. Uh, it would be a diminished chord of some sort. Um, so let's not worry about that. I just wanted to say a word about uh, the nomenclature as you'll encounter them. So let's explore some of these spices with examples as, as I try to do each week. Um, for reasons that aren't clear to me, Pete, Pete Townsend of The Who, who's one of my heroes, um, uh, songwriting heroes, is sometimes credited uh, with kind of originating the widespread use of suspensions, particularly twos and fours in, in rock music. Uh, certainly, they had been used plenty before him. Uh, but maybe he does deserve some credit for really kind of um, using them in a, a pretty ubiquitous way in a lot of his songs. One example of uh, how he uses this, um, uh, in particular the uh, suspended four, is in Pinball Wizard. Okay, um, so I'm, let me play a little bit of it, and, um, and I'm going to play it kind of simply. I can't strum as fast as Pete Townsend anyway. Uh, and then, you know, so you can kind of hear the changes and then I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit, okay? Ever since I was a young boy, I played the silver ball. From so down Brighton, I must have played the ball. I've never seen like it in any amusement hall that death don't lie here. Okay. Um, now, this is kind of interesting because he actually, uh, he does a walk down. So basically he's going A, G, F. Now, there are a lot of songs that kind of go like that. It might even bring some, the way I just played it without the suspensions, might bring some to mind. So there's nothing very uh, unusual about that. It's a commonly, that kind of chordal walk down is very common in popular music. What he does that's inventive, in addition to the rhythm and the strumming, which we haven't talked about yet, is in each case, he starts with the suspended four. In each of those chords that I just played, he starts... Okay, and then the G. F. Sus four. Okay, he actually plays an E five there, but let's not worry about that. So he's just got a little pattern going. Okay, he does a basic walk down with the chords, but he's alternating between the A, the sus four version, and the basic triad major chord. Okay, so combine when you then combine that with the rhythm it gets quite interesting, okay? So I think there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a pretty deep lesson in just that little part of that famous song, okay? So you can explore uh, that a little bit. And one last thing, and we'll be getting to this more in the next few weeks, uh, and, but I really would like you to, to notice um, this, that the melody, and I hummed a little bit of it as I went along, the melody really parallels not only the walk down, right? But if you listen close, and you know, I encourage you to play with this, play it around. It it also kind of parallels that uh, sus four thing, right? La 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 
okay, and so on. Um, and I'll be talking a lot about how kind of melody, for me, and I think for many other songwriters, tends to emerge from a lot of the other elements in your song, and in this case I'm talking about the chord progression element, the harmony element. Okay, so Pinball Wizard is just a really great illustration of the sus4, okay? And you might want to play around with a little bit. Uh, Bob Dylan makes use, I mean, sus4s are all over the place, but Bob Dylan makes use of the uh, A sus4 in Tangled Up in Blue, but he does it in reverse, okay? Let's see, sorry. Okay, he goes from the A to the A sus4. So he's kind of building up tension rather than relieving it, okay, um, sequentially. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty, if you know that song, uh, I'll just play a little bit. It does the same thing, right? Let's see. Why did my way out the seat? Light in my head, red on my feet, it's another crazy day. Okay, so he's doing the same thing, just A to A sus4. So you can get a lot of mileage out of that kind of thing. Now, it's not to say that that these suspensions need to be used adjacent to their plain triad. Of course they don't. And I'll be playing you some examples where they're, where that's, uh, they're just used incidentally and uh, not necessarily as a resolving device or a tension building device as I just played. Um, but I wanted to show you that kind of basic use of it first, okay? Um, again, that, that sus4 chord contains three notes crammed together in the interval of a minor third or three half steps. So for the A, again, to remind you, the A sus4 chord is C sharp. Um, uh, well, you have A at the bottom, but the three notes in, uh, kind of crammed together are C sharp, D, and E. Okay, so you can see how close that is. So there's a significant amount of dissonance that's in that little interval that wants to be resolved, usually by going, or often by going back to the simple triad, but, uh, or else it, it builds dissonance from the base of the simple triad, as in Baker Street, or it's just used in the flow of the uh, progression. What about uh, sus twos? Well, I would say the resolving power for sus2s is even stronger than with the sus4s because uh, there's something about just kind of going down one step, okay, that's um, uh, very, uh, a very powerful kind of resolution, okay. The same would be true going up one step. We talked about that with the flat sevens last week, okay. So let me just play the beginning of uh, Wharf Rat by the Grateful Dead, which goes from A sus2. Often, uh, these two chords are um, often the first two chords uh, beginning guitar players learn. You can play most of a song. This song just mostly uses these two chords um, to an E minor. Okay, so A sus2. Here's A. So let me just play the song a little bit, then I'll play it with just the A without the suspension, and you'll hear the difference. A major to E minor, and you'll, I think, hear the difference. You can already hear it. It's just a lot plainer, right? Oh, man. It just doesn't work. 
Uh, maybe it's because I have the song in my head so much, but you get so much more spice from that simple change, really simple change. And it, and it feels to me very powerful then to take that to the E minor. So that's an example of A2. I'm not going to belabor this. There's These suspensions are just everywhere. You can hardly find um, a popular song that doesn't have some of these, at least. So look up the charts on the internet, realizing that probably the majority of them have mistakes in them. And those mistakes typically involve these kinds of... Um, additions, these kinds of spices, the, these suspensions. Either they leave them out, which I very commonly see, or they, um, they put them in wrong, uh, uh, things like that. Um, and, you know, it's an annoyance to find these charts, and then there, you, you get kind of uh, to some point in the song, and you realize, oh, that's not right, that's not how it's supposed to sound. If you're a beginning guitar player, you might wonder if you're playing it wrong. Use this to your advantage. It's actually noticing that there are mistakes in these charts. And then figuring out how to correct the mistakes is fantastic ear training. It's one of the best tools that I've learned for training your ear. Playing songs that you know with mistakes in the chart, okay? When I say that you know, I mean that you're familiar with. Uh, you might not, you need the chart because you don't have it memorized or you don't know the chord progression. But there are mistakes all, so, so don't, don't curse at the mistakes. Uh, use them for your own ear training. Um, in a way, they're, they're, really, they're really good to come across. Okay, we've talked about twos and fours. Let's talk about sixes, okay? Last year, I had a little obsession with sixes uh, in my songs. I don't know why. One of them was um, First Day of Spring, which uh, is in my channel. Please subscribe to my channel, and I'll put a link in below here in the comments. Um, and this uh, simply goes from A major um, to D6. Actually, it's, it's, it starts out... Um, the first part of it and I'll, uh, is, is actually an A sus 2 to D6. And by the way, if I don't say, when I talk about these chords, if I don't say minor, you should assume it's a major. So this is A major, A sus 2, A major sus 2, to D major with an added 6, okay? So let me just play a little bit for you, okay? The first part will be the A sus 2, to D6, and then I'll move down the neck, and it'll be just A major to, to D sus 6. That's the D6. It's a nice resolution. Now, I did lie to you a little bit. It's not just D6, okay? It's actually um, D6 or D2, 6. It's got both the 2 and the 6 in it, okay? Here's a D chord, okay? Here's a D2, sometimes called a D9. You can subtract 7 and it's the same thing. It just depends on where that 2 uh, or nine is, okay? So again, D major, here's D9. Okay, here's a D, plain D6 chord. Okay, and here's the D2-6 that I was playing a minute ago. Okay, so it's even more spicy. So you can, uh, one reason I wanted to use this example is you can combine these things, okay? Twos and fours are combined all the time. It's beautiful. 
Um, so again, let me just play this, the A to that D2-6 chord. Okay? It's, I think it's kind of nice sounding, okay? And I made a whole song out of that. Um, the other thing I just want to point out here is both the A... Well, up here, I was playing an A2. I could have just played... Okay, so that's just an A. Um, the, but I'm playing these chords up... And, and the D is this, that same D2-6 up here. Okay. The same notes are in these two chords. But they sound different. These are called different voicings, okay? I'll be talking about that probably in a few weeks. There's a lot you can do with different voicings. For, the, for many years when I first took up the guitar, I played almost exclusively what are called cowboy chords. They're the first position chords you learn down here, you know, C, G, D, F, E, A, you know. Um, there are so many combinations of them up on the fretboard, or or and similarly on the keyboard. Um, uh, we'll be talking about that later. But even though they're the same chord, so this is another way to kind of spice up your progression, is what I'm trying to say. Even though there's the same chord, the same they contain the same notes. They might not be in the same order. Um, they have different different sound to them, different feel, and um, uh, so you might want to play with that. We'll be talking about that um, later on, okay? Uh, I also wanted to give you just quickly an example of a minor chord that uses one of these spices um, that we've talked about today, uh, since so far I've just been playing major chords. In my song Old Car, which is also on my channel, and I'll put a link in below in the comments, the verse is is based on switching back and forth between D major D minor 7 that's D minor 7 which is very similar to F major in fact often will resolve like D minor 7 F major to C right okay cuz that F to C remember is that plagal pin so that so it's a nice kind of way to sort of glide into the resolution. Anyway, this is D minor. I'm not playing the F in this song. To a D minor 6. That's D minor 6. Okay. Remember D major 6 was this? That's D minor 6. Okay. So... I, I was fooling around one day, this is why I encourage you to always fool around, and I just started kind of... Well, that sounds kind of interesting to me. And then, you know, I, as I kind of, you know, I just kind of put a rhythm to that. that launched a whole song for me, okay? I mean, there's more to it than that. You can listen to it. But, um, you know, again, fooling around with these spices, even if it, the most recent song, I wrote a song uh, this past week, I sat down at the guitar and I deliberately, I had the uh, a deliberate thought in my head, I'm just going to stick my fingers down randomly, as randomly as I can, you know, so I kind of didn't look, suck them down, and, well, okay, that's something, it's kind of spicy, but it's not strange, it doesn't sound horrible, and then, you know, I've got, there's all kinds of variations. And, oh, and you know, 
I went right to, I went right from here to the E major. How did I do that? The only reason that I could do that, and this isn't bragging or anything, but I played enough and my ear is developed enough to have had just intuition. There was no thinking going on in my brain, no active thinking, but I just had the intuition that that was just going to resolve to an E. I didn't even know the name of this chord. I had to figure it out. It's a kind of an A chord. Suspend, suspended, which resolves nicely to the E, okay? So fool around on your instrument. What can go wrong? If you're by yourself, you know, so what if it sounds horrible? Do something else, okay? Something good will come out of this, I guarantee, okay? Um, I think my last example is, uh, again, one of my songs, a pretty recent song of mine called Free to Love. It's again in my channel and I'll put it in the comments below. I bring into this, the reason I wanted to use this as an example is I bring in a lot of the spices that we've been talking about uh, in the verse in particular. And another thing I want to illustrate with this is the, while the verse, and I'll play it for you, is very spicy, the chorus stays entirely in the home quadrant, okay, of A, A major. Um, that's really worth mentioning because while we've been talking about resolving the tension using sevenths, seconds, fourths, we can also think of resolving tension in kind of bigger chunks, okay, such as from the, you know, a, a verse which has a lot of tension built into it through these suspensions and other chords to the chorus, which kind of goes home. Um, that's a very, very common thing to do in songwriting. And just because it's common doesn't mean that it's wrong or right. Uh, it's to your taste. Uh, I think it's, it's something that I don't always do by any means but I have plenty of songs that work like that. It, it, it doesn't happen, I don't set out to do that, okay? It's a natural thing that goes with the kind of evolving form and sound of the song, okay? These things just sort of all sort of start condensing out of the mist together. And that's one of the main messages I wanna give you. So in, in the verse of this song, I play a D major 7 chord. Now you can play that. This is the cowboy chord of, of D major 7, the, the one position, but you can play it up here too. And I follow that by that chord we just talked about a minute ago in First Day of Spring, that D6 sus 2, okay, or D2 comma 6 where it's a, it's a D chord, but I add D major, but I add the six and the two to it, okay? Um, and then I, that's an A sus two. Again, we played that four frat down here, but it's real, but I can also play it up here, okay? And then I resolve to the A major. That's A major, a form of A major. So again, putting those together, D major 7, D6, 2, A sus 2, A. Now let's suppose I just played the plain versions of those chords, right? So I play just a D major, D major, a major, A major. Now, I've, I've written songs that do that, and lots of people have too, okay? Um, that four to one uh, transition is wonderful. Um, or you can spice it up, as I've done in this song, okay? So I kind of do that two times around.
then I'd do a D sus2, followed by an A major 7. Now here's the cowboy. It's the same chord, but up here it sounds different, right? And it's also kind of a nice, there can be some nice things about sort of staying in the same region of the fretboard. Not always. But it's an it, it 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 has its virtues, okay? So D sus two to A major seven to D six two again, back to A major seven. Then going to a B minor. Now and then I resolve to A to start the chorus. La -da -da. Okay. Now, notice that the B minor from previous lessons, if you look in the quadrant, this is in A major, um, the B minor is the relative minor of D major. So, so we're kind of, it's, it's not really a resolution, but it's kind of creeping back into that, it's a transition back to that home quadrant from all this spicy stuff. I mean, Technically, the spicy stuff, this verse stuff, is in the home quadrant, but it's all spiced up. And the B minor is sort of a transition way to get, to kind of let go of those spices. And the chorus then is just right. Read of me, whoever Okay, it's just purely in home territory. Then I go, freedom, heal, freedom, understanding is another word for love. This is how we know what's real. Then we go back to the verse. Poster on my cabin wall tells me I can have it all. Every So anyway, that illustrates a lot of um, spices in the verse, no spices in the chorus. It's a technique. It, I never thought about that. I didn't notice it until I was preparing for this. So, um, but again, this is what comes out of your ear development fooling around. Okay. So again, all these songs, are, these examples of my songs are in my channel. Please subscribe. Uh, the links are below in the comments. Um, so, to end, I, I just encourage you to look for songs. Uh, uh, and, by the way, there's so many sites where you can pull up these um, uh, uh, chord charts with all kinds of mistakes in them. Find one that you like. There's lots and lots of them. Or find a few that you like. Uh, pull them up. Look for these spices. You'll see where they say sus2 or add2 or 4, add6, all over the place, okay? They really are all over the place. Um, uh, and um, as always, fool around with these uh, spicy chords on your instrument. Uh, great ear training. They'll inspire you to come up with progressions that sound interesting to your ear. And if they sound interesting to your ear, they probably will sound interesting to other ears, too. Okay, that's all I have till next time, uh, when we'll be starting, I think, uh, to talk about rhythm and lyrics. I'm looking forward to that, and until then, stay in tune.